unprecedented crisis arose in U.S. Air Force, serious problems with F-22 Raptor fighters were revealed. The U.S. Air Force is rushing to retire its Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptor stealth fighters. The main argument? The 32 least upgraded Block 20 versions of the fifth generation supersonic stealth fighter are unfit for combat and together they cost nearly half a billion dollars a year to maintain. As the Telegraph writes, the F-22 is the most powerful, most advanced fighter in the US inventory. It is probably the largest fighter built to date, but keeping the old F-22s in service is prohibitively expensive while the Air Force is struggling to fund a range of new capabilities including new fighters, bombers, radar planes, drones, satellites and nuclear-capable ballistic missiles. But according to a new report from the US Government Accountability Office, the planned retirement of the nearly 30-year-old Block 22 F-22s would weaken the Raptor force. The Air Force has now banned any F-22s from being scrapped for at least several years. That's because the Block 20s are trainers. Without them, the Air Force would have to assign some of its upgraded Block 30-35 stroke F-22s, which have improved sensors and weapons, to training missions. The end result would be a deep reduction in the number of F-22s available for combat. The Air Force has not documented how it would conduct F-22 training or testing current Block 20 functions without Block 20 aircraft. It also does not document the challenges combat units might face if mission-ready Block 30 stroke 35 aircraft were used for training or testing instead of Block 20. The Government Accountability Office document said, Today, there are 150 operational Block 30 stroke 35s. If and when the Air Force retires the Block 20, there will be only 129 operational Block 30 stroke 35s. The remaining operational F-22s will be relegated to training or testing. At an airfield with six forward deployed squadrons that fly the F-22, five in the active Air Force, one in the National Guard, the situation would be even more dire. With sophisticated sensors and a delicate coating that fools radar, the F-22 is finicky and requires maintenance. A squadron needs 24 jets to have 12 jets available to fly on any given day, according to the US Government Accountability Office. So in practice, there aren't 150 combat-ready F-22s. There are 75. Retiring Block 20 will reduce that number to 64 or 65. That's woefully low, given the enormous responsibility that Raptor squadrons carry. The Air Force is in the midst of a fighter crisis. But that crisis will not be solved by retiring trainers and reducing an air superiority force that is probably already too small, the publication writes. Russia lost 33,713 troops, 352 tanks, 1,393 artillery systems in Ukraine in June. The Russian army's losses in Ukraine in June amounted to 33,713 troops. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine said this in its report. In total, the enemy's losses in June amounted to 33,713 occupiers, 352 tanks, 589 AFVs, 1,393 artillery systems, 22 MLRS, 58 air defense systems, 3 aircraft, 997 UAVs, 1,758 vehicles and 284 special equipment units, the report says. As reported by Ukraine Form, the Air Defense Forces of Ukraine's land forces destroyed 300 means of aerial reconnaissance and attack of the Russian invaders in June, an Su-25 aircraft, three cruise missiles and 296 drones. The Kremlin does not release official statistics on military casualties. Ukraine's general staff is reporting that Russia has lost more than 540,000 troops in Ukraine since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, a number that includes killed and injured. Sergei Krivenko of Moscow-based Citizen Army Law, a human rights group, says Russia's aggressive censoring of statistics, along with virtually no remaining independent news outlets, means that the rate of casualties is unlikely to sway popular opinion about the war. 
In the 1990s, when the Chechen war began, there were independent media outlets that objectively discussed the military topic on their pages and told the truth about the losses he told. And this had a sobering effect on society. There is the most severe censorship now. The authorities have everything under control and for publications of this kind, you can easily get a prison term. Krivenko also noted that the majority of troops sent to Ukraine are contract soldiers, an important distinction from the Afghan and Chechen wars fought primarily by forced conscripts that were sent to slaughter, which caused tension and backlash in society, even to the point of creating social movements. Those who voluntarily signed contracts to fight in Ukraine, he added, made their own choice. In addition, they receive a decent salary, he said. That is, ordinary people do not feel particularly sorry for them. Krivenko said that while Russia's enormous losses in Ukraine cannot be hidden, with cemeteries expanding in every Russian city and town, it will not force the Kremlin to change course. They will only turn up patriotic rhetoric more intensely to explain the growing losses, he said. They will repeat that there is a war with the West, so everyone goes to the front.